Good morning, YouTube family. This is Randy. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Christ on the Coast. And uh, <laughs> I'm sitting in my Doka Double Cab studio getting ready uh, to do this uh, video for you guys. And I, as I was driving down Coast Highway, I noticed uh, some of these puffy clouds that are in the sky right now. And it just reminded me of when I was a kid in uh, Glendale. I used to lie down in the backyard and uh, and I, I think I mentioned this in other videos, but hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention it again. Uh, I used to just fantasize about eating the clouds and the little mountains that were behind our house in Glendale. We lived in the foothills. And I used to take a spoon out of the kitchen and I would actually go like this and dig into the, into the uh, mountains with a real spoon in my head and then put it in my mouth like it was chocolate ice cream and then you know, dip the spoon in the clouds and pretend like it was uh, whipped cream or something. So anyway, um, anyway, welcome to my channel this morning. And I'm down here in Sunset Beach and we're going to take a walk in a second. Um, I just wanted to tell you the top five favorite things in my life, uh, just for, you know, future reference and information. God is first. My beautiful wife, Debbie of 39 years is second. My beautiful grown children, Randy and Jessica. Uh, Randy's going to be 40 this year, and Jesse's going to be 33. My two beautiful grandchildren, uh, Clayton and Delilah, and then my daughter-in-law, Elise, who's married to Randy. Those are, uh, that's number three. Number four are cars. As you've seen in past videos, I'm a car guy. And number five is food. So anyway, I just thought I'd kind of share that with you. Uh, today's theme, today's theme is uh, Teresa and Casey to the rescue. I have two little stories for you. So let's take a walk. Let's take a walk on the beach. I've got my thimble here and I'm gonna, uh, there we go. All right. Beautiful day. It's a uh, spring. You can see the clouds in the background. That's kind of what I'm talking about is, uh, if I had a spoon right now, I'd be going like that and digging in and eating them. Uh, so, um, uh, when I was in first grade, uh, my parents sent us to a Catholic school for one grade only before we moved um, to a different school. And it was in Burbank, California. And the name of the school was, uh, the name of the school was St. Robert Bellarmine. And the interesting thing about this school was it was kind of a, uh, it was a school where you had to wear a uniform. But as I remember, the uniforms that we had there, they were kind of, uh, get my rainbow sandals off here, walking in the sand. Um, what I remember about it was that they were, they were kind of like military kind of uniforms. They were uh, khaki colored, kind of tan brown colored. And they had a big, I had a big shiny belt. And uh, it was an interesting, it was an interesting uniform because you had a hat that was kind of like a military hat but it wasn't really a military school. It was it was a, a elementary school that went all the way up to eighth grade. So, um, good morning, how you guys? Um, so as I as I was uh, in the school in first grade, there was a we we were able to take our lunches and put them under our desks. And as I remember, and there was this kid who was uh, his name was Michael Winkler. And we had our desks in rows, and uh, um, my sisters, Teresa, Laura, and myself were the only ones in our family that went to the school. I was in first grade, Laura was in third, and Teresa was in fourth. And Michael Winkler, he was this kid that it was, let's say, in row three, and I was in row four, and he, um, his desk was kind of one in front of me in that row so I could kind of see everything that he was doing. And uh, one of the interesting things was he had his lunch, um, I'm getting my vimble, get my vimble set up here. Uh, he'd have his lunch uh, under his desk and he made it a habit to kind of dig into his lunch every day. He had a lunch box, um, I had a paper bag lunch. Uh, my mom, by the way, when she gave us lunches, she would always give us the same thing, pretty much. It was a bologna sandwich with mustard and mayonnaise, nothing else on it, white bread, three cookies and an apple. But Michael Winkler, he kind of had a deluxe lunch in his, in his uh, little lunchbox. 
But the problem was that he always ate egg salad. And what he would do is he would open up his lunchbox in the middle of class and he would kind of dig in and with, into his egg salad sandwiches and it smelled like eggs. And I just remember him licking his fingers and, and uh, you know, he'd have these greasy egg, you know, fingers digging in there and, well, they were greasy when they dug in, but they were greasy after he got it and he was eating it and chewing it up. And um, anyway, that, that was kind of a, he was a nice kid, but you know, it was kind of gross. It kind of smelled kind of weird. Um, but I remember one particular day, the way that this worked as far as us getting to school, my parents drove us to school but then we took the city bus home to our house in Glendale. And this school wasn't that far away, but it was far enough away, there was no school buses that uh, back then that would take us to school from where we lived. So, um, so when school was out, I would go out and I would sit in the front of the school. And I remember vividly sitting on this, it was kind of like a, a kind of a wall, but it was kind of a flat spot where I could sit comfortably and I would wait for my two sisters, uh, Teresa and Laura, to get out because Teresa would then be in charge of walking us to the, the city uh, bus line and then we'd take the bus home. Well, on this particular day, um, as a kid, I was always bashful about wanting to go to the bathroom. And um, so I, I, would hold, I would hold it, uh, you know, till I couldn't hold it anymore. Um, and, you know, I was pretty good at holding it, but this particular day, I remember sitting there waiting for Teresa. I really had to go to the bathroom, and then I just actually peed in my pants as I was waiting for her, and I could feel myself doing it, but I just did it anyway, and I just kind of, uh, you know, I felt, uh, well, I felt a mixture of a lot of things. I felt scared, ashamed, everything. Anyway, Teresa walks out, and I, I, I get up off my little area, um, the, 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 the little wall that I was sitting on, and I turn around and looked at it, and I noticed this big wet spot. Teresa saw me, and my khaki kind of colored uniform was completely sopping wet. And so what Teresa did is she really didn't say anything to me. She took her sweater, and she tied it around my waist, and we just continued on to the bus, got on the bus. I sat on her sweater, you know, getting her sweater probably all gross and stuff. And I just remember getting off the bus, walking up the street to her house, and and that was it. She didn't she didn't make fun of me, she didn't belittle me, either did Laura. They I just felt, you know, um, as I look back at it as an adult, I just uh, I just think that's just amazing that they that they did that. So, so she, Teresa rescued me from the embarrassment of everybody knowing that I was wetting my pants. So, so thank you, Teresa. Uh, now, as you know, that we moved down to the beach when I was in eighth grade. Uh, so we spent all those early years in Glendale, moved down to eighth, to, down to the beach in eighth grade. And I spent one year in a public school. It was called Horace Henson Junior High School and it was eighth grade that I went there. And in that, uh, that year, it was the summer between, in between my seventh and eighth grade year, um, I, I didn't have enough time to make any friends that really went there. My brother Steven was a year younger than me, so he was a really good friend, but um, that was back in those days when I started calling him a woman and all that stuff, and you guys will see that in other videos, but... Uh, <laughs> But I, I was a lot more shy than my brother Steve. Steve, Steve was not as shy as me. And um, it, I was miserable that whole year at Horace Sense. And, and, and in fact, at lunchtime, I would just walk around like when we had recess, they didn't call it recess, but we had lunch and we were you know, out on the blacktop and I would just walk around the buildings and I would kind of go into the gymnasium and kind of go into the bathrooms and pretend like I'm washing my hands. and I. I really didn't have any friends at all. And uh, on one particular uh, afternoon, I, I remember uh, watching these guys play handball um, and I kind of wanted to join in and play handball, but um, you know, I just was too shy. Nobody asked me to join in or anything. Um, but there were these two guys that would kind of walk around 
Uh, one guy's name was Casey and the other guy's name was Steve. And Casey was kind of a, he was one of these guys that when he got into a fight, he would always win the fight. Uh, and he didn't go and pick fights or anything like that, but he was like one of these skilled guys that could use his feet. And, and so I saw him getting a couple of fights when I was there and, and, and his sidekick, this guy named Steve, he didn't really do anything. He just kind of like palled around with Casey. And he was kind of a big, kind of overweight fella, um, as I remember. Uh, and he, um, I, was, I was standing there waiting to try to play some, uh, some handball. And, they, it, it, and the way that they played handball was just like a big, you know, uh, basically a, like a basketball. And they would, not like handball with the little gloves and this tiny thing, and they would just pound it against the wall and then you just kind of, you know, join in and see if you could do it. So anyway, I'm just standing there as a spectator. And for whatever reason, um, Steve, the, 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 the sidekick of Casey, came up to me and tried to kind of push me around for some reason. And I, you know, and I'm just, I'm, again, I'm four foot 11 and I weigh, you know, 80 pounds, 82 pounds. I'm just a tiny guy and this big fat guy comes in now, when this happened, <laughs> I had no reason, why, you know, I didn't know, I wasn't gonna fight the guy or anything. I didn't really know how to fight or I didn't really know what to do. I was just kind of, you know, he's kind of like, you know, kind of bumping into me and putting his chest, you know, kind of close to me. And I'm kind of looking at him like, what are you doing? And, you know, well, here's what happens. Casey, and I don't even know Casey. Um, Casey steps in and pushes Steve, this guy, this big fat guy, Steve, out of the way and just kind of stands in front of me and, you know, says, L -l -l leave that guy alone to, to me. And so then, you know, he kind of looks at me and gives me a little smile and just walks off. And uh, you know what? And that, that still sticks out in my, in my memory bank to, to, to today as a, you know, a 67 year old man that this, this kid, Casey, you know, basically rescued me from this fat guy, Steve. And, I've got to tell you, I didn't deserve that. I didn't earn it. I have no way of knowing why he did that. Maybe he was kind of aware of my existence by, you know, seeing me walk around and knew I didn't have any friends. I don't know. I don't know what the what the deal is, but it, you know, chance, luck, and chance would have it that he basically protected me. And that brings us to again this this beautiful story of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. You see, you guys, our sin separates us from God. The sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden separates us from, from, from God. Because of our sin, we, we have this gap in our relationship. And that is why God sent his only son, Jesus, Jesus to this earth to die for us. We. It's a free gift that we, we, we can't earn it. We, we, we don't deserve it. And yet it's offered to us freely because God so loved the world that he sent his son that no one should perish but have eternal life in him. So guys, in my encouragement for you today, I just wanna remind you that you know God is good. He's on the throne. He is, he is a God that is so full of mercy. He is so patient with us and he loves us and he proved it by sending his only son to die on the cross for us. And all we need to do is to repent. And when, when we say repent, that just means to turn from the sin. We acknowledge that we're sinners because all of us fall short. That's what the Bible says. The wages of sin is death. That's why we have a lifespan of not living for eternity is because of sin in our bloodstream now. We just live a, a ripe old age of 70, 80, 90 years old. Some people make it to 100 but we eventually die and God is so rich in mercy that he wants us to spend eternity with him. So he sends his only son to die on the cross so that if we just, we repent, we turn from our sin, we trust in God, we trust in Jesus, who was the sacrificial lamb for us, like we would trust a parachute and we believe in him and follow him, we will have eternal life. And I know it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those things that you look around this world right now and people are putting their hope, they're, they're, they're banking all of their, uh, you know, people that are married as an example, they, um, they, don't, they don't put their trust in God as much. Sometimes 
they have a, a mutual understanding, you know, in marriage that maybe they're, you know, they're into tennis or, you know, and that's their, that's what they, that's what they hang their relationship on. Or maybe they, they like to collect mugs uh, and they hang their relationship on that. Some people, um, they, they like to, to binge watch Netflix and that's their relationship on that. My marriage to my beautiful wife, Debbie, is based on the solid rock foundation of Jesus Christ. And because of that, both of us love Jesus more than we love each other. And by loving Jesus more than we love each other, that allows us to love each other more than it, it is possible in life because of his supernatural power and the power of the Holy Spirit guiding us. And so guys, again, once again, I, I really appreciate the fact that I get to use this format that God has directed me to, to do this channel. I, I really appreciate the feedback that I'm getting from all of you. And I know that some of you are, you know, you're, you're, you're maybe, you know, looking for something. And I'm just, I'm just here to remind you that God is here. Jesus is alive. He proved it by dying on the cross and rising from the dead. And if you just trust in him, you repent, trust in him, you will have eternal life with him. One of my favorite Psalms in the Bible is Psalm 42, verse one. And it says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. God bless you guys. Until next time.